The Incredible Hulk. <laughs> More like the Hulk, because he's not incredible. So without further ado, let's review this movie in our little MCU review marathon in preparation for, of course, Avengers Infinity War. I mean, you'd think maybe I should do this for, like, Avengers 4, which is really called, like, the culmination of everything that we've seen before. But this is also kind of that, but, mm, you know, just the Infinity Stones part of it all, and, you know, with everyone teaming up, and it's still a pretty good amount, trust me. But anyways, without further ado, let's get into this. Oh, the Incredible Hulk. Yeah, that was part of the MCU, by the way. I don't know if you really remembered that. Uh, it's actually, it's it's quite the oddball, you gotta say. And it seems to have the least amount of relevance in the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. But hey, let's ignore that, and let's look at this actually as a unique individual film. You know, what it still is, technically. So, without further ado, let's get into this. That's what, the third time I said that? Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is starring, like, what, that, that cool guy, Ed Norton, right? That's his name? He's a good actor, sure. I've seen him in a few other things. However, he's not necessarily, like, the best Hulk, like, <laughs> you know. I, I didn't really enjoy seeing him that much, and especially now that you compare him to Mark Ruffalo, of course, you got the bias of, you know, seeing Mark Ruffalo being recast for him in Avengers. Mark Ruffalo definitely seems, like, really good, although I still can't picture him in a solo movie. The Incredible Hulk, this is the solo movie that maybe shouldn't have happened, and instead, you know, like, you know, maybe give it to someone cooler, like Black Widow or Hawkeye. <laughs> I'd honestly, I just said that, yeah, I'd honestly prefer a Hawkeye solo movie over a Hulk solo movie. So as you could already tell from these negative vibes, eh, don't really like this movie so much. Uh, I gotta say it was very uninteresting. It has a lot of boringness thrown into it. But also, you know, some good Hulk green smashing fraction scenes where he Hulk smashes stuff. And he says that one that one line, his famous line, Hulk smash, in this movie for the one very time in the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. And it wasn't even that good, honestly. Like, he, he literally hesitated. He was like, Hulk, and then you wait like 10 seconds, and then he says smash. But anyways, that's going away way too elaborate into this. But uh, yeah, it was it was a little uninteresting. Didn't really care too much for the story. And then, like, ah, it wasn't really anything too good up until the point where you get to the final scene with the abomination. Like, the final little battle scene, that's cool, because who doesn't like some giant green CGI strong people punching each other and destroying an entire city? That stuff always looks cool, right? <laughs> Except it was actually, it was fairly well done. Hey, speaking of which, didn't Abomination actually, uh, spoiler alert, I don't know if anyone cares, didn't he actually survive at the end? <laughs> like, huh, he's like the one villain from phase one, discluding Avengers who actually survived. Anyways, yeah, you got, you got some romance with Bruce Banner and Betty Ross, uh, another character, who just hasn't returned and she's out there somewhere, wherever that may be. I didn't care about that even so much in all the love story. This this film, you know, it's just it just really proves let's just give up on Hulk solo movies. That seems to be a given up matter anyways, because well, Universal, by the way, owns the rights to the Hulk and they decided no more solo movies. They're cutting Marvel off. Although he can still be part of any team-up movie they want him to be in. Which is, of course, why he was in Say Thor Ragnarok instead of having his own Planet Hulk movie. Now, you see, Planet Hulk is something that I feel like actually could have been, like, a pretty good movie. But, no. This is kind of an origin story. Yeah, it's, it's an origin story, but... I still feel more emotion being provoked from the Mark Ruffalo, you know, after this first movie than any of the emotion that was trying to be portrayed in this Incredible Hulk movie. But, you know, that's, that's not sad. And, uh... What was I about to say? I was about to say something pretty important. Um, Iron Man's in it. <laughs> he, was, he had a little cameo in the after credit scene. Uh, also something that I you know, would probably prefer to see over someone as lame as how Abomination's character was set up. I mean, it was cool when he was fighting and all, but the actual villain itself, like, I didn't care about him until he just had a cool action scene and called it a day. But, like, General Ross say we got Red Hulk up in here. Now that would be pretty cool. Still waiting on that, but anyways, yeah, uh, what was, oh yeah, I was in the middle of something before, I think I cut myself off, that's funny, uh, so basically, this film, yeah, proves like you, you can't, you should stop doing solo movies, alright, all the Hulk movies in the past were definitely much, much worse, this was like the best Hulk movie you're gonna get, and it still was like, eh, like a little below average, like, okay, meh movie, you know? So that's the conclusion right there. Uh, not much more to say about this. That all being said, thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for lots more videos coming real soon. Of course, next film is... Oh, look, we're back to Iron Man already. Haha, <laughs> bye!